Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be changing my alternator. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Yep, those are the dogs in the background. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be changing my alternator in my 1991 Mazda Miata. So let's get started. So the good thing is uh, we can use basic hand tools. You're not gonna really need much for changing your alternator or your radiator. Your radiator is really only held up by like two bolts and they're gonna be two 14 millimeters. Uh, everything else for the alternators, uh, 14 mil on the bottom bracket and a 10 and 12 on the upper tensioner. Uh, if you do have the luxury of using power tools, I definitely suggest using some. Uh, we also have our drain pan, uh, extra coolant, and the radiator still in the box, so we'll be doing that last. Make sure you have the car on jack stands. Um, use the small little one-ton jack, um, and then we just put the little jack stands on there. And yeah. So a little update of my car changes that I've done so far. I've added this really cool lip. It actually made a huge difference to the car, made it look more cool, had more character to it. All right, normally when you're removing your radiator, uh, you can either drain it from the little like peacock they have down here, it's a little Phillips, or you can use a flathead. I like to use a flathead because it won't strip it as much. Um, or you can just uh, disconnect your lower radiator hose, which would honestly drain a lot easier. After it starts pouring out, you want to let it all go out. Luckily, since we removed the hose up top, uh, it relieves a lot of the pressure in the radiator, so it'll all just pour right out. And then you're gonna want to wait till this finishes draining, and then you can just disconnect this lower hose here, and be mindful that it will still drip out of this lower hose right here. For some Miatas, these are uh, still connected, but since we had messed around with this uh, a while back doing something else with the car, we had already disconnected these little brackets that were right here, so there's nothing tying the radiator down to anything. You also have these little drop-in points that you can see up there, which is what the radiator sits down on. There's another one on this side too. Uh, the radiator is now completely drained. Uh, you can cap it back off if you don't want it dripping anywhere, and you can just pull the radiator up and out of the way. You also want to remember to remove this harness after you unclip it, make it a little bit easier for removing. Now, we will be reusing the factory fans, so do be mindful on how you remove some of these parts. Some of them might be a little rusted like this, but they should come out with uh, fairly any issue. As you can see, we're gonna have to be replacing the alternator and also the tensioner bracket because this tends to go bad. This is the second time that this has happened uh, where her battery's been completely drained, but it's the issue with the tensioner bracket up here. So this is exactly what we're gonna be uh, fixing and changing out the alternator because the alternator is bad. Now the next part is gonna be loosening this 14 mil here and it's another 14 mil on the other side of the bolt back here. All right, uh, normally you can disconnect these first and if you have access to it in the back. For us, it's a little bit harder to access this in the back. So we like to do this last, especially 
doing so many Miatas, this is probably one of the easiest ways to. So you have a little 10 mil here and just a clip right here that you're gonna remove. And always remember to disconnect your battery whenever you're doing this. So this is the new alternator that we're gonna be putting in. Yes, it is a remanufactured alternator, but it'll do the job just fine. Luckily, the Miatas don't need much. If there are these plastic clips and stuff, you do wanna remove them, because you don't wanna leave them in there while that's spinning. We're gonna be putting in the bottom bolt first. It makes it a little bit easier, so it lets the alternator pivot. What you wanna do is you wanna get your tensioner, this is gonna be the bolt that bolts into this top portion right here. So what you wanna do, get your tensioner and your tensioner bolt ready. And now you wanna try and with the tensioner still very loose, you can press the alternator all the way up against your engine and try and stretch the belt over. Okay, and after getting her on, you can retighten the tensioner All right, now that you have everything done and tightened up, uh, make sure your tension is okay. You want at least a bit of a quarter turn to half a turn on your belt. You don't want too much flex. You don't want to be too soft or too tight. Here we have our, this is from DNA Racing. This is just your typical uh, eBay intercooler. And honestly, I'm really happy with how this looks. Welds actually look really, really nice. It has the same mounting hardware, so you can put your factory fans because uh, both of the factory fans are going to be going right back on this. It even came with radiator cap. And since this is a nice dual core uh, radiator, it's a lot better for performance reasons. You know you want to keep your car running nice and cool. It even has upgraded drain plug, which is a lot bigger than the last one, <laughs> than the factory one, so that's really nice. No bent fins and looks really, really well. So after you get all uh, the fans transferred and everything, you do want to reuse your old uh, mounting brackets. So like these pins, they come out and it's just a little C-clip on the bottom that you pop out on the old ones and you press these back in. And also the rubber grommets because you don't want anything vibrating metal on metal. So always use those. So after you get it in, you want to start running your clips back for your fans. that's all on it's a nice snug fit uh, it's all tightened down and everything so now you can take your overflow hose put it here plug it right in all set next we can get the upper uh, radiator hose connected and then everything on the top portion is all set and ready for it to be refilled all we have to do is plug the bottom of the radiator and also reconnect the lower radiator hose all right guys so now we finished popping off our system we're letting it bleed we still have the car jacked up in the air because you want this to be the highest point of the cooling system don't worry that won't be going in there this is going to get taken off anyways so you wanna make sure that you get it up to temperature, turn on the AC or heat, whatever gets both of your fans to turn on. And you can even like press on the hose and everything just to make sure there's no more air bubbles in there. And as long as bubbles don't uh, come out on their own, you should be all good and your cooling system should be nice and uh, bled and burped. So we can take this off, let it drain and clean off any excess uh, that's around there. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every week. Don't forget to hit the little notification button as you'll be notified when I'll be posting up next. Hope you guys have a great day. See ya!